All right, guys, today on Bicycle Showcase, we are going to meet the cousin of the top fuel. Yeah. Yeah. The fuel, EX, or is it the EX fuel? Fuel EX. Fuel EX. Well, there you have it. I've, I've sobered up. <laughs> Let's get on topic. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona and you are watching another episode of Bicycle Showcase on Toolbox Topic. Oh my God, I screwed that one up. Maybe I'm not sober yet, who knows? Um, I'm joined once again by my co-host, Brandon Van Leuven. Brandon, how the hell are you? Really good. Good, glad to hear it. Thanks. As you notice, we're wearing the same clothes because this is the third video we've recorded on the same day. It's not, <laughs> believe we're done me, after this clean. one. Yeah, yeah, we're Exhausted. done after this one. Seems like it's been so much work, <laughs> Lord. Anyways, and once again, we're at the Trek Bicycle Store of West Phoenix in Goodyear, Arizona, where the cool kids hang out, and me. And today, we're going to talk about the Top Fuel's cousin, the Fuel EX. Brandon says this is the bike for me, not the Top Fuel, nor the Slash. Ask me what mountain bike I'm buying next, by the way. Comment down below. Um, but I've owned one of these, and this is, I would say, hands down, in my opinion. Not professional opinion, because I'm not a professional rider. But in my opinion, as someone who rides a tremendous amount, one of the best all-around mountain bikes I've ever been on before. It's just outstanding. That's why I love selling this bike. Any form of the fuel, uh, the fuel from 5 to 9.9, .9, it does everything. Yeah. Absolutely everything. You can take this to... You can absolutely take it to Snow Summit and bomb down. You can race it. You can do everything. Of course, it has its limitations yeah. and things uh, uh, on both ends of that spectrum. But the bike is an all-around fantastic bike to ride. Yeah. Everybody loves this bike. I never had a bad experience on mine. It was, it was very, very enjoyable. Um, so let's talk about some of the differences between the Top Fuel and this, since they are very close together on that spectrum, so people can get an idea of what might be which way they want to go. Um, and then we'll talk about some of the components and options that we have, including the uh, amount of travel we get on the suspension front and rear um, and what we can expect. Now, this is the EX5, so this is going to be the aluminum frame. When we go into the carbon frames, when we get to the nines, right? Or is Correct. it the eights? The Correct. nines. Anything with a decimal point in Trek means it has carbon, carbon. frame. Okay, cool. So, so let's talk about the differences between um, the top fuel and the fuel EX. The the top fuel is what we consider more of an endurance racing geometry bike. Okay. It has less travel. Okay. It's definitely a more efficient platform than the fuel. Okay. But the reverse part of that is it's going to leave you a little bit to be desired when it comes to more technical terrain. So the fuel isn't quite as a good of a climber. It's not quite as fast, not quite as quite as efficient, but when you do want to take it to a little more technical stuff, it'll perform better. It'll do you more favors. Now, when you say endurance geometry, just kind of in my head, I'm thinking the dust to dawn race. Perfect. That's here in town. Yeah. You start at sunrise and you finish at sunset, however yeah. many laps, that would be a great place for the top fuel to shine. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Not top that you fuel, couldn't ride it with this. Yeah. Top fuel, super caliber. Super caliber. Yeah. And, uh, you know, more minimal travel bike. Yeah. But, you know, for a race course, it's a race bike and the, the, the uh, the amount of travel is appropriate for, for your most for cross country race courses. Awesome. Um, all right, so there we have it. Now, as far as travel goes, what are we looking at travel in the rear and what are we looking at travel on the front? The rear has 130 millimeters of, of travel, okay. front has a 140 millimeters of travel. Okay. If you did want to upgrade this fork, you could, Trek does say that you can extend up to 150 millimeters without uh, compromising the, the ride quality of the bike. Okay. So. Upgrade up to 150, 130 in the back. Now, on the slash, if I remember correctly, it's 160 in the back with 150 in the front out of the gate. It's a big bike. Yeah, but I mean, that's just kind of show you that that's more for the downhill, not necessarily. Right, right. Riding. That is an aggressive, yeah. technical rider bike. Now, we had a great question, and this is one of the things I love about you know the viewership, um, especially here of late. They've been very, very involved. One of the questions was, could they change out the shock on the slash, the rear shock, um, to a different option as far as Rock Shock or Fox. And I went on Trek's website and did some research, and you can. Yep. So you can just have you to make sure that the parameters, parameters right, and are it and it for gave a list. So can you do that as well with the fuel? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. No, and you're it's, not going to mess with the travel, but you, as, but you can get a more a nicer feeling shock right. put on. There's always premium more quality. adjustability. Yeah. All that. Yep. Yeah. Dial that in. So. Yep. 
All right, excellent. Um, now, this is the entry level, but I'll ask, is it hydraulic or mechanical on the disc brakes? Hydraulic disc brakes. Hydraulics, okay. And we are seeing a uh, 1 by 11 or 1 by 12 so on 1 this. by 12 on 1 this one. 1 by 12, so even on the entry level. No, they did. Congratulations, specking a 1 by 12 on our most entry level bike. Come awesome. out of these guys. They did got a job for post? Yeah, we got, it seems like we got everything um, on this bike. Now, we're rolling straight 29, not 29 plus. These are straight 29. I think these are okay. 2.6s on here, if I'm not mistaken. I can't say 2.5s, 2 but 2.6. Yeah, so okay. it's a big, beefy tire. Yeah. Not tubeless, unfortunately. The, the system is ready to go tubeless, but uh, we are entry level one here. So this is a wire bead out of the box. Kill those wire beads, go tubeless as are. You know, now, even if you want to just go tubeless right out of the box. Right out of the it. gate, yeah. yeah. Um, now, for some of the viewers at home, when we say that it's tubeless ready, but it's not tubeless, to swap these out to tubeless, you're going to actually get the rims themselves are tubeless ready. Correct. But you have to put that strip inside, and then you have to get a tubeless tire, tire. and then you have to put the sealant in. Sealant and a valve. And a valve. And they're all, they also have been doing a very nice job lately of already pre taping oh, okay. these rims. So that's eliminating one more piece, one more piece uh, of the puzzle. The puzzle yeah. So now, for someone who comes in, and again, for some of the bikes that are entry level that are tubeless ready but not tubeless yet, is that additional $150, $200 just to do it right out of the gate? It gets depending on the tire you choose installed give yourself about two 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 250 bucks, okay yes. so i know i rolled the maxis ardens and those aren't the cheapest They're things not in the cheap, world yep. so and it says um, also the price of tires are going up well, before our very eyes yeah so yeah okay so just kind of keep that in mind guys tubeless ready um you know the rim's right but you're going to have to at some point swap out to uh, a tire and what i would almost do is just do it right away and then keep these as a backup in case Absolutely. you torch a tire, you got something to put uh, put on there. That's a um, that's a great plan. You know, so is there anything else our viewers should know about this bike? I can't say enough good things about it. I rode mine for damn near a year, almost a little over years when I bought the rail. So yeah, it was about a year and a half. And seriously, guys, it didn't matter if I had it up north here in Arizona. For those obviously get out of Arizona, we're in Arizona, but Sedona, Prescott, Flagstaff, down Kills here it. in the valley, all the regional parks never had an issue with it kills it yeah. so um anything else you want to add for our viewers at home this um, but this bike pretty much sells itself i would almost say this is the tacoma of <laughs> trex line <laughs> all right seriously I'll, I'll take that yeah i'll take that it is it is the workhorse i feel like yeah absolutely anybody could have a great time on this bike um i think if someone's watching this video uh at the entry level fuel they probably don't know i'm assuming of course they may not know a ton about bikes in general right because we're watching this one on the on the entry level at this level even though it's an entry level bike we should know that if you're going to step into a, a dual suspension bike or one that's as, as sophisticated as this one that the maintenance is going to go up considerably dramatically. Mm -hmm. we have a lot of moving parts on this bike. absolutely so just as maybe a word of caution when getting into a dual suspension bike I mean, we have all these pivot. I think we've you know have talked about this before. Yeah. All these pivot points have a bearing on them. Those will all need to be serviced or replaced at some point. I have a front and rear suspension for preventive maintenance once a year. That's going to cost. Depending you on how many hours you ride, though, too. Yeah. I mean, mine, guys, because of all the hours I ride, is like three times a year. Yeah. Because I ride a shit ton. So yeah. Yep. <laughs> so cheap those either. are going to add up. <laughs> yeah. You have hydraulic systems. You have um, pressure canisters inside yep. the dropper post. Um, they're fantastic bikes are awesome, but be prepared for, uh, you know, a down the road, this, this maintenance plan mm -hmm. that's going to have to happen right. uh, to keep this bike working, working well. Yeah. Yeah. It's you're kind of, it's yeah, a lot. It is. It really is. Um, so definitely keep that in mind, but it's completely worth it because the ride oh, that yeah. you'll, this yields. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, smile on Brandon's face, <laughs> type of thing. I mean, it's just, it's seriously, it's like no other. So, um, and that's on any of the dual suspension higher end bikes. You're gonna, it requires more maintenance, but the, the ride you're gonna um, receive is, is 10 times, you'll notice the difference right yeah, out of the gate. We so. say around here, you gotta pay to play. Mm, and yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna add up, I promise. That's what I told you last time. <laughs> <laughs> ah, joking guys, it's a kid's show. Brandon would never do something that like means. that. <laughs> you know what it means. <laughs> Ah, God, I caught him off guard with that one, guys. I'm sorry. Usually there's a finger involved. And if you haven't, don't know what that's about, I'm going to leave a link to the Christmas episode up top. And you'll see the, the dramatic conclusion of the one-year saga of Mr. Finger. So, I'm oh, sorry. He'll be back. He's just on vacation. So, he'll be back.
expect a postcard maybe next episode. Uh, so, right, Brandon? Mm-hmm. Look at you. Because <laughs> you know you miss them. <laughs> so, all right, we digress. This is going this is going way off the rails again. So, all right. There you have it. I think that's it, Brandon. Yeah, that's chill. Well, okay, so we got, real, real quick, sizing and availability before I forget because we've gone so far off track. Small, medium, large, extra large. Now, does this also I, come in a medium large? Medium large, absolutely. Okay, so yeah. it's got that in-between size for you, you know, guys or gals. You happen to be at that height, you know. Um, now, double X available on this for 2022? I forgot to look. Okay. Chime in down below, guys. <laughs> it happens. And I say 2022 tongue-in-cheek because, you know, by the time you get your bike, it's 2024 these days. Which brings me to the next thing, availability. It's now, bad. this is a medium-large. How many of these do you have in the shop currently right now? Uh, two. Two. Okay. And when those are gone, I get one more shipment, and after that, I'm looking at 2023. Okay. So, there you have it, guys. Seriously. Um we talked about the Roscoe, the last one, and it was bad too. 2025 on one of those models. So guys, if you're in the market for a higher end bike or even an entry level bike, because that's what your budget dictates, do not mess around. If you see one and you like it and it fits, get on it. We always have always prided ourselves on not being a high pressure store. But if I see a little gleam in your eye and you like, dude, you just got, you just got to yeah, get it. Because if you come back the next day, it's because gone. Because it will be gone. And this happens all the time. Yeah. So the customer comes back, oh, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. it's gone. <laughs> Today. Yeah. And it's not coming back. So I'll have to nope. send you to Utah or California to find one. Yeah, horrible. <clears throat> and some people are making that trip, unfortunately. So, all right, guys, there you have it. The Trek Fuel EX5, the entry level Toyota Tacoma, a- <laughs> AKA um, workhorse of a bike. That, seriously, guys, I swear by this bike. I, you know, I, I regret getting rid of mine. Hopefully, here in the near future, I'll be getting my hands on that 9.8 um, that you and I both know who they're eventually going to sell theirs. <laughs> and that'll become mine. Um, but it's a great bike to have in your stable, whether it's your primary bike or just a backup bike. It's you, you definitely won't be as disappointed. So, on that note, hit the like, the subscribe, and the bell notification icon, please and thank you, because you will help out this video, and you will help out the channel and you will be notified every time we post a new video, whether it's a bicycle showcase, whether it's a toolbox topic, a trail video, or a garage talk. I'd say there's plenty to choose from. Also, there's a link down below for the Trek Bicycle Store of West Phoenix. It's where the cool kids hang out, and me. And if you have any questions, you can follow that link and contact Mr. Van Leuven or one of his wonderful, amazing coworkers and associates here, and they will be Happy to help you. I love these guys to death. I can't say enough good things about them, seriously. We're also going to have some links down there for our social media. That is Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Oof, I know. But if you want to keep up to the day-to-day affairs, get out of Arizona. Follow us there. We have announcements all the time with group hikes, group rides, different fun things that we're doing. And the affiliate links down below. Not all of them are affiliate links, but some of them are. And if you follow one of those links and make a qualifying purchase, we will receive a small commission. And I need to be upfront with you about that. So it says YouTube, even though they're the biggest criminals of all. <laughs> you know, it's true, dude. That's how you get closed down. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Why is my account shut down? No, but seriously, guys, it does help us out. Park passes, gas, um, and the coffee and everything like that. And we definitely appreciate it. And we appreciate the support we've received so far here in 2022. So on that note, what do we always say? Be kind to yourself and others. Be amazing stewards out on that trail. And I have to ask, what are you waiting for? Get out of Arizona. Yeah, with enthusiasm, Brandon, come on, <laughs> come on. Come on, dig deep. Get out of Arizona. Oh Lord, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna blame it on the mustache. And apparently it's a third video and he's oh so tired. So no, joking, guys. We'll see you on the next adventure. Brandon, thanks, man. Cool. We appreciate it. We'll see you next you week. Take you. care, guys. <laughs>